Raytheon, or RTX Corporation, is one of the largest defense contractors for the United States. But have they just gotten busted for selling high-tech gear to America's enemies? Just what happens when you try to play both sides of a conflict and come out on top? I'm Paul, U.S. Army combat veteran. Let's talk about the defense industrial complex running amok. Okay, so this is one of those this is probably one of my favorite type of stories because when I worked for Homeland Security, I would see them all the time. Now, here is the headlines being reported in the media to the extent this is being reported at all, right? RTX or Raytheon is fined $200 million for exporting defense tech to China, Russia, and Iran, among other violations. It says employees traveled abroad with unauthorized technical data about U.S. aircraft and other weapons. Now, Raytheon, this $200 million fine is sort of depressing because one that's not that much relative to Raytheon's net worth but also a hundred million dollars of that is actually going to be suspended Raytheon will not have to pay it if they promise if they pinky promise to spend a hundred million dollars improving their compliance so they are not only going to not have to pay for committing these series of crimes uh, but they are actually going to do something they want to do anyway. This is like saying that, listen, if you pinky promise to work out and go to the gym every day, we won't put you in jail for that DUI. Guys, that's a pretty good deal, okay? There's a reason why, of course, Raytheon gets those kind of deals and you know the, the regular uh, Joe Blow Americans don't. That... Especially when we when you hear about what they did, you're going to lose your mind, right? This settlement covers 750 violations of the Arms Control Export Act and International Arms Traffic Regulations, or ITAR, according to the Department of State's release. Again, half the fine goes puts towards remedial compliance measures to strengthen RTX's compliance program. The Defense Industrial Complex version of going to the gym, Right? Now, here's when we look at the charging document, we're going to take a look at the charging document here in a little bit, but I want to point out that some of the way this is reported is in very general terms. Right? RTX uh, had unauthorized exports of defense articles, but it also d failed to properly classify things. It also un sourced some articles from unauthorized sources, right? So, now, some of the violations include companies traveling to countries with classified and controlled technical data from a bunch of aircraft and weapons, including the F-22 and E-3 plane. But it also, RTX had to tell its investors that it set aside more than a billion dollars to settle a bunch of different government investigations, including this uh, another State Department inquest into export control violations. But now, and the company, of course, declined to answer anything else about the settlement. Now, we're going to talk about what exactly is in the DOJ's charging letter, because we got a hold of that, and we're going to see what exactly this means for the company's bottom line. But first, I want to mention that if you feel like you need to improve your own bottom line and get things done, well, you don't need to turn to selling illegal weapons to America's adversaries. Maybe you just need a little bit of a boost to caffeine. That's why you want to check out Strike Gum. Strike Gum, we're having our Labor Day sale and that means you get free shipping until September 6th on all orders over 50 bucks and 20% off on international orders. So check it out. You're going to use promo code LABORDAY24. And the link is going to be in the description. I recommend you get two of the five packs, right? The five packs are perfect because they are the equivalent of 125 energy drinks. Okay. Or excuse me, they're the equivalent of 25 energy drinks that would cost you at a gas station 125 bucks, and you're available each five pack just 25 bucks. So, right, the choice is yours: 250 dollars in energy drinks or 50 bucks with free shipping in Strike Gum. It's a no-brainer, especially if you work in the trades, construction, uh, you're a cop, a firefighter. You can't show up to a job site or a call a carting around an energy drink. You got work to do. So keep Strike Gum in your pocket, chew it. Get the natural caffeine, no sugar crash because it's zero sugar, and best of all, it's veteran-owned and made in the USA. Oh, and by the way, that same promo code, Labor Day 24, it's good on Combat Vet News as well. If you want to support the channel and get access to those uncensored combat videos that drop twice a week, uh, 
you just enter Labor Day 24 over here and you'll get a 10 to 20 percent off, depending on your tier uh, of any of these tiers, specialist, lieutenant and colonel. So you can't lose. Right. Double dip in same promo code Labor Day 24. OK, so we got the charging document here. This is what the DOJ was like. Proposed charging letter to RTX Corporation in Arlington, Virginia, right next to the Pentagon. You can literally see it. And they say, listen, you violated a ton of the Arms Control Export Acts. Now, here's one of the reasons they got off with such a slight slap on the wrist. The first is that the disclosures were actually voluntary. RTX themselves said, hey, we messed some stuff up. But specifically, the people who messed things up were Rockwell Collins. Rockwell Collins is, a, is another contractor that got eaten up, got acquired by RTX. Uh, and RTX knows, RTX is plenty profitable. Uh, but Rockwell Collins may not have been. They may have been in dire straits. And it sounds like Rockwell Collins played fast and loose with the rules and may have been compromised by foreign intelligence. We're going to talk about that in a second. But... When RTX acquired Rockwell Collins, they looked through their records and said, holy cow, guys, they are double dealing right and left. So they said, listen, they knocked on the government's door and they said, listen, we need to stay in the government's good graces. Hey, we just bought this thing. It's like saying, hey, you buy a house, you go, we're going to knock out this wall and open concept this kitchen. You go into the wall and boom, out comes stacks of drugs. What do you do? The answer is, you don't try to sell the drugs yourself, you call the cops right away. As soon as you realize that the previous occupants were doing something illegal, even though it's currently your house, if it's recent, you have a good chance of not getting into trouble. That's what RTX did. They called the government and they said, yo, Rockwell Collins was doing some weird shit. The government said, yeah, you no joke. So let's take a look at what they did, the violations of the ITAR. Now, they fall into two basic categories. The first is that unauthorized export, re-export, and retransfers temporary imports, right? So what that says is that they exported some unauthorized equipment to a bunch of different countries that weren't allowed to have it. Some of them are not really U.S., enemies, right? Uh, some of them are things like Norway and Australia who accidentally received some classified material, but some of them are distinctly enemies of the United States, like the PRC or People's Republic of China or Russia. So looking at this, it, one category is, of course, unauthorized exports, where you send them stuff they're not supposed to have. But another one is actually in uh, unauthorized export or sourcing. And that is where you the company sits there and goes, listen, we need steel, for example, or to make our our uh, our missiles, right? The casing for our missiles. Well, we're going to source that steel from China. And it's fine because steel is steel. But things get a little different when you say, hey, we need circuit boards for our missile guidance systems in China. Well, the DOD comes in and says, listen, uh, OK, what exactly is a is a generic circuit board that where it's not a problem for us to source it from China? And what components are so sensitive that we can't afford to have America's enemies be the ones making them, right? And so a classic example would be something like a circuit board, where if the Chinese company knew that those circuit boards were going to end up in things like an F-35, they might add a little, little, little sprinkle of something special in there to allow China to compromise the F-35, uh, maybe something to give away its location or to uh, make it easier for China to detect it, or even just simply install flaws, raise it, making the F-35 or whatever component less reliable. And so all that kind of sourcing decisions are uh, very, very, taken very, very seriously, as seriously as sending, right? Unauthorized procurement. Now, RTX says, well, it's because we didn't, Rockwell Collins didn't understand some parts of the ITAR. But as we get into this, we're going to see uh, it's, it's not quite like that, right? So, again, between 2015 and 2015 to 2023, Rockwell Collins, and for a period following the acquisition, exported technical data to China on 45 different types of categories about uh, printed circuit boards, right? 
Again, misclassification, but circuit boards for some really sensitive stuff. Again, they procured parts for some of the most important aircraft in the U.S. arsenal from China, letting China get inside, literally, Air Force One, guys. They let China into Air Force One. Chinese circuit boards. Who knows what they put on them things? The A-10, B-1, the B-1 Lancer, the B-52, the C-17, C-130, F-15, F-16, F-18, KC-46, 130, 135, and all the different MQ drones, MQ-9 Reapers, Stingray refuelers, Fire Scouts, Tridian surveillance aircraft, Poseidon's, and even U-2. Guys, we don't even fly the U-2. And yet, Rockwell Collins... Bitch, just stick them in there. We may have just accidentally outed ourselves as still flying the U-2, by the way. FYI. That thing isn't supposed to be flying. Anyway. Officially, we don't fly the U-2. Crazy stuff, guys. And, in one disclosure, respondent, that's, that's RTX, said that following the issuance of purchase orders and production of these circuit boards by Chinese suppliers, it caused a retransfer without authorization of technical data in the form of a first article inspection reports to its Chinese FBs in Shanghai. So basically, it said, listen, when we got the circuit boards, we accidentally outed the fact that they were inspected, the standards they're inspected for. And you see the problem, right? Because again, if China knows those circuit boards are going to end up in F-35s or in Air Force One, and then the and then Rockwell Collins goes and says, hey, by the way, guys, here is exactly how those circuit boards are checked before they're installed. You can imagine that if they said, listen, we check each, we check four corners and to count to make sure the chips are right. Well, the PRC is going to go, great. So as long as it has the right number of quarters and the chips look right, It'll pass inspection. So now we can start to, we know how we can play games to sneak under the radar. So again, these are really big screw ups, but that's not all. You can see that they got lots of these type of screw ups, right? A Tomahawk crew involving the Tomahawk cruise missile, Sea Sparrow, airframe missile, paveways, right? And a lot of these are technical things about exactly when it becomes military equipment and when it's just parts. And, but some of these are huge mistakes that look like a lot. Like these were items that were uh, compromised, I'm going to say, by a foreign intelligence service. And here's, here's the story that makes me think that this wasn't a boo-boo, right? This wasn't a widow mistake, uh, switching happy to glad. In 2022... So after Russia had invaded Ukraine, RTX said there were unauthorized export of defense articles to Russia, a sanctioned entity, during an employee's personal trip in May and June of 2021. Right? So as Russia was preparing to invade Ukraine, a Raytheon employee took a personal trip to Moscow to sightsee for two months. But here's where things get annoying and weird. The employee took their RTX issued laptop, which contained technical data protected by the United States, and he took it to St. Petersburg, Russia. And then, again, you're an RTX employee. This is not an accident. You know what's on that. You know what's on that laptop, and. You're an RTX employee. You can afford your own laptop. It's not a personal laptop. Why would you take it? It's, it's a, it's a, they know that RTX has this cybersecurity software installed. Now here's where things get suspicious. Employee hand carried the laptop, which contained iCard control technical data, St. Petersburg, Russia, and then attempted to use the laptop while in Russia. RTX's cybersecurity team received an alert for the laptop on June 1st, 2021, but incorrectly dismissed the alert and several subsequent alerts as a false positive because RTX was moving to a new cybersecurity tool and had experienced, quote, a temporary increase in false positive geolocation alerts. Respondent didn't restrict the network's, the employee's access to the RTX network until June 10th after the employee had returned to the United States. Guys, so... This is why I point this out. For 10 days, during 
a uniquely vulnerable window where a cybersecurity tool was pumping out false geolocation alerts. A RTX employee took their RTX issued laptop containing highly technical data and then activated it multiple times while accessing, right? While having access to the RTX network. Again, this is not, hey, I took my work laptop to watch Netflix. Guys, a laptop is so cheap. If you're an RTX employee, if, you're, if you have this level of access to technical data. Oh, and by the way, the employee's trip was to visit his Russian fiance. Now, respondent determined the employee's laptop after they got back hosted 152 files that contained protected technical data related to the F-15, the F-A-18, the F-22, and the F-35, and the U-2 reconnaissance aircraft. The employee, RTX determined, quote, had traveled to Russia on personal travel on four prior occasions since the start of his employment in June 2019 to visit his fiance, and that he had taken his RTX-issued laptop on at least one of those earlier trips. Again, does that sound like someone who is just an accident, just, oh, I didn't see that it was classified? There are too many perfect coincidences for this to be an accident. So RTX and Rockwell gets compromised, has employees that are compromised by foreign intelligence. And they get, receive a, a huge fine by the U.S. government for saying, listen, you have to tell us these things. You have to have employees that do the right thing, that are disciplined. You cannot have these kind of mistakes. And what happens to RTX, guys? Obviously, the U.S. government will not be doing business with RTX again. And of course, they will be fined a massive portion of their, their net worth. Just kidding. Nothing happened to RTX, guys. This is their one-year chart. You can see their five-year chart, in fact. You can see right here, they had the COVID dip. And then, ladies and gentlemen, getting hit with this fine has seen them spike to an all-time high. And this is a company that's not even done. They acknowledge, they're like, listen, we got another bill set aside just to settle with the U.S. government for all the shit we did. Again, you could see they're paying out a 2% dividend yield, guys. So imagine going up 50% in the last five years and pumping out a nice little healthy dividend. Maybe we're the idiots. We might as well get that Russian money, I don't know, maybe put it in your portfolio. And market cap, guys, that $200 million fine, Raytheon's market cap, $164 billion with a B. For those of you keeping score at home, $200 million. Let's see. So, one, so uh, let's see. A, let's, uh, let's see if I can do this right. This is a little tough. This is hard math. So $200 million is a is a 20th of a billion, right? The 20th of a billion relative to a $164 billion company means they were fined point. Oh, sorry. That's a ratio. Let's, let's get the percentage. Excuse me. As a percentage of Raytheon's net worth, as a percentage of their market cap, they were just fined one-tenth of 1% one of their market cap. Ladies and gentlemen... It pays to violate the United States law. Oh. You'll pay. That's, that's let's see, uh, relative for an American, uh, okay, one-tenth of 1%, that's like getting like a $10 fine, right? Let's see if I can do that. Actually, we're going we're gonna to do this math. Average net worth American. The average, <laughs> the average American's net worth is a million dollars. Okay, this is because Jeff Bezos is American, FYI. Um, Let's do median. That'll be a little better. That way we're not... There you go. Median net worth. If you exclude Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. Median net worth of an American. $200,000 renos. Get out that calculator. 
right? $200,000 times 0 0.0012. I think it was two zeros, right? Okay, so Raytheon got hit with the equivalent of the median Americans, the 50th percentile, the equivalent of a $240 fine. I, uh, that's, that's a, that's, that's a light speeding ticket, guys. That is a light speeding ticket. I think I got that right. Yeah, that's right. So, $240 speeding ticket for Raytheon. We're selling the Chinese our secrets. Anyway, guys, that's all I had. That's, uh, that's my angry rant for today. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate all the Colonel Tier members, particularly James Sterling, Steve Moran, Doug Beck, Alan Knudsen, Bastian Himmerling, Yanko Georgiev, Dale McCombs, James Ola, as well as all of the Lieutenant Tier folks. Could not do this without you guys. Appreciate you all so much, and I will see you all in the next one. Be sure to subscribe. See you. Cheers.